Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to take pork jowl, or cheek, and turn it into an Italian cured meat known as guanciale. Guanciale, for lack of a better way to describe it, is like bacon, but with a slightly firmer fat. It delivers extraordinary flavor, and it's a quintessential ingredient in one of Italy's most popular pasta dishes, carbonara. <laughs> So let's make guanciale. The first thing you're going to need is pork cheek. Now, I've got the skin on, and I recommend that you keep the skin on as the skin helps regulate the drying. These are the spices that we're going to be using to first cure our pork cheek. And don't worry, there's going to be a recipe link in the description box below. But you see, we've got fennel, we've got some red pepper flakes, a little garlic and rosemary, some fresh cracked black pepper, and we're going to be using a curing method known as the equilibrium cure, which means we're going to weigh our pork jowl, and based off of the weight of our pork jowl, we're going to precisely measure each ingredient. With this curing method, you're going to use 100% of all your seasonings, spices, and herbs. Utilizing this method of curing your pork jowl will deliver consistent results, and you don't have to worry about it being too salty. So once you've got your seasonings and herbs and spices rubbed onto your pork jowl, go ahead and put that in a vacuum seal bag or in a Ziploc bag, and then make sure you put whatever's left over in your pan back in that bag. At this point, you can vacuum seal it, or if it's in a Ziploc bag, try to get as much air out as possible. Every other day, while this is curing in your refrigerator, you're going to want to make sure that you massage the muscle, both on the front side and on the back side. This is just going to ensure that it cures evenly. And what I like to do is to flip the bag every other day. But pork jowl cures pretty fast. So after seven days in your fridge, this is what it's going to look like. The meat within the muscle is going to take on an extremely brilliant red color. You're going to notice that the texture is actually a little more firm and the pork cheek has now absorbed the flavors from your seasonings. After rinsing it off, it's time to get our casings together. And I want to take a minute and talk about collagen sheets. Collagen sheets have got to be one of the most versatile types of casings you can have in your arsenal. And I highly suggest get at least one or two packs because you can use them for all sorts of things. In this case, I'm going to take one sheet and just cut it right down the middle. Each half is going to serve as the casing for my pork jowls. And the reason I like collagen sheets over, let's say, cheesecloth is because they're actually designed for this type of application. They form a skin-like barrier on your whole muscle, and that really regulates the drying, which is the secret behind any great salumi. In order to use a collagen sheet, you don't have to wet it, but your muscle needs to be damp. I wouldn't say it needs to be saturated. So just make sure that your muscle is damp. And now all I'm going to do is fold that collagen sheet onto the muscle. And this is probably one of my favorite things about it because it is a sheet. And so you don't have to worry about the size of a casing. You can form it or fit it to just about whatever you want. And if you've ever had, you know, like a pancetta that uh, just would not fit into a casing, then you would appreciate a collagen sheet. So I'm gonna truss this up. You could use a netting if you want, anything that holds it all together while it's drying. This is what our pork jowls that are properly cured, wrapped in collagen sheets look like. And now it's time to hang them in our chamber. Guanciale, much like all air-dried charcuterie, needs to dry slow. So our chamber is set to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, with a 75 to 80% humidity. These conditions are gonna allow the pork jowl to really develop its flavor as it's drying, and it only takes about four to six weeks. I typically target about a 30% weight loss when making guanciale, but if you'd like to age yours a little bit longer, that's okay too. It's just gonna get richer and bolder in its flavors. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how I make a Roman carbonara. It's a very uh, traditional pasta dish in Italy. Uh, using this guanciale, so be sure to stick around for that. Notice we've got white mold that's been growing on the outside of our guanciale, and that's okay. That is a mold called Penicillium nalgiavensi. That's just going to add to the depth of flavor for this charcuterie, and it's just time to peel off our collagen sheets. There's a couple ways you could do this. I'm just peeling it off directly out of the chamber, and you can see it's coming off pretty easy, but if you want, you could soak your guanciale in some warm water for about 30 seconds, and these collagen sheets will come off even easier. This is what our guanciale looks like now that it's been finished. It's got about a 30% weight loss. 
It's firmed up to the touch. It smells absolutely incredible. You could see the resemblance of bacon right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to get this ready for our Roman Carbonara. So the first thing I want to do is remove the skin. Now, it is important to know that you don't have to use guanciale immediately. Much like most of the charcuterie that's been cured and dried, you can put it in a vacuum seal bag and freeze it for later use. It freezes incredibly well with no loss of quality. So our skin has been removed. You can see right here, it's actually got a nice texture to it. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a center cut and I'm gonna go ahead and start slicing it for the Roman Carbonara. Now, how you choose to slice your guanciale is completely up to you. You could do thick slices, you could do thin slices, or you can cut it up into chunks like I'm doing here. I like the particular meaty texture that it provides. And now that our guanciale has been processed, let's go ahead and make our traditional Roman Carbonara. To make our carbonara, we're gonna whisk in our pecorino into our eggs and egg yolks. Once we have that whisked well, we're gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of cracked pepper. By the time you're finished whisking, your mixture should be relatively thick. Set that to the side. Now it's time to cook the guanciale. So on about a medium heat, we don't wanna cook it too fast. Slowly cook it, stirring it often, until it begins to take on a little bit of color. Once you've got that color, take your freshly cooked pasta. Now the pasta will just be coming out of the water at this point and go ahead and start to incorporate that in with your cooked guanciale. Cook this for about two minutes. While you have that cooking on a low heat for a couple of minutes, take some hot pasta water and add that to your egg mixture. Whisk it well. This is gonna begin the slow cooking process of that egg mixture. It's gonna thin it out and it's gonna keep it from turning into scrambled eggs. Once you've got it whisked well after two minutes, go ahead and pour that over your pasta. Make sure your heat is on the absolute lowest setting and stir often. This is something that you're only gonna cook until the sauce begins to thicken. Once the sauce begins to thicken, take it off the heat and serve it hot as this dish is meant to be eaten immediately. Roman carbonara with your very own guanciale. A little cracked pepper and a little extra cheese if you want. Talk about a satisfying dinner. As you can see, I've got my work cut out for me and I really do hope you get a chance to make guanciale. And if you do, try this recipe out. Roman carbonara, authentic, traditional. There's really nothing like it. It's absolutely incredible. Thanks a lot for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you're new to the channel, we'd like to say welcome. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. We post new videos each week. We'll see you in the next one.